Many apps work with large sets of data, but only need to load and display a small portion at any given time. If you're not careful, you might request data you don't actually need, wasting your user's battery and bandwidth. If the data you're displaying is constantly updating, it can be difficult to keep your UI in sync and still send only a small amount of information over the network. The paging library, part of Jetpack, tackles these problems, enabling you to load data gradually and gracefully. The library supports both large but bounded lists, as well as lists of unbounded size, such as continuously updating feeds. It offers integration with RecyclerView, which is typically used to display large data sets and plays nicely with either Live Data or RxJava for observing new data in your UI. The paging library is based on the idea of sending lists to the UI with a live data of a list that is observed by the RecyclerView adapter. It then builds up on this idea by adding paging so you can load content gradually. Let's go over the main components of the library and see how they fit in your app's architecture. The core elements in the paging library are the page list and the data source. A page list is a collection that loads data in chunks, known as pages, asynchronously. A data source is the base class for loading snapshots of data into a given page list. Data sources can be backed by the network, database file, or anywhere you want to retrieve data from. You create a data source using a data source factory object. The paging library also provides a page list adapter, which helps you present data from page lists in a recycler view. The page list adapter is notified when pages are loaded, and it uses diffutil to compute fine-grained updates as new data is received. The paging library provides the live page list builder class for getting a live data object of type page list. To create a live page list builder, pass in the data source factory object and a paging configuration. If you prefer working with RxJava instead of live data, then just use the Rx page list builder. It's constructed similarly to live page list builder, but instead of a live data object, it will return an observable or flowable, depending on what you need. Let's take a look at some common scenarios of loading data from a database or a retrofit-based network source and see how the paging library helps. So first case, let's say that the database is your data source. The Room Persistence Library provides native support for paging library data sources. For a given query, Room allows you to return a data source factory from the DAO and handles the implementation of the data source for you. Second case, let's say that the database is a cache for data loaded from network. So here, you would still return a data source factory from the DAO, but you would also need to implement another paging component, a boundary callback. The boundary callback loads more data when the user gets near the end of the data that's in the local cache. After the data is inserted, the paging library automatically updates the UI. But don't forget to associate the boundary callback with the live page list builder you created earlier. That way, it can be used by the page list. Third case, having only the network as your data source. Here, you will have to create both your data source and your data source factory. But when choosing which data source type to extend, consider what your backend API looks like. If you need to request data from your backend based on a key, you would extend from item keyed data source. Let's take an example. You might need to get the first 100 commits added to a GitHub repository after a certain date. Then the date will be the key for your data source. Item keyed data source allows you to define how to load the initial page, as well as how to load items both after and before a keyed entry. If your backend exposes APIs that work with pages, then you would extend from page keyed data source. For example, the search repository's GitHub API returns paginated items. In the GitHub API request, you need to specify the query, which page you want, and optionally the number of items per page. Independent on how you create your network data source, you will need to implement a data source factory that knows how to create your data source. For full examples of how to implement all of these cases, including how to handle error cases or retry mechanisms, check out our samples on GitHub. OK, let's sum it up. Here's what you'll need to do to integrate paging. You'll need to define your data source, create a boundary callback if it's needed, create the live data of a page list with the help of a live page list filter, 
update your adapter to be a page list adapter, and then finally, observe the live data of a page list in your UI and set the page list to the adapter. That's it, just five steps. Check out our documentation, code samples, and collab, and start using the paging library to provide smooth, performant lists for your users.